So, hello uh, to director Kathy Schweitzer, Craig Poison, to uh, facility managers David Hall and Steve Lefevre, and to coach Edie. I am dressed like this today because I want to talk to you about golf. My proposal today for you is that the golf team should have an indoor facility, preferably in one of the racquetball courses we have, that we can work on our game over the uh, winter season. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to bring in a special guest, Ryan McAvoy from the golf team. So thank you, Ryan, for being here. And uh, I have a couple questions for you. First question, um, how much have you practiced over this winter? Um, not really at all. Um, the only times we uh, have time to practice is if we're working and after we have like 20 minutes, but basically nothing. So. Okay. And would you say that golf is a game based on practice? Yes, it's, I mean, if any of you guys play golf, I mean, it's, it's all practice is what it is. It comes down to repetition. And, you know, if you stay cold over the winter, you know, batters also the strength. Exactly. And uh, just so you guys know, the golf team has a tournament uh, coming in about three weeks. So if we had a facility like this, an indoor hitting range, how much would you use it? Um, probably every day, because I mean, I need to practice more than anyone on the team. I had a rough season, so it would be nice to you know, you know come back in the spring. Exactly. So um, basically, Ryan's one of those players that definitely needs to get into uh, shape before the season, just like all of us. And he feels that this would be uh, a good idea. So thank you, Ryan, for coming in today. Thanks for your testimony. All right. So um, we'll let Ryan. Head out here, but um, while he's taking care of business over there, um, Dr. Schweitzer and Dr. Poison, you might be aware of this, but for those of you who don't, this is the mission of Springfield College in terms of athletics. As you can see, it talks about the equal opportunity and equal emphasis that this school has on sports, but does it really? Think about it. There's our multi-purpose turf fields that you have for the soccer team, the football team, the lacrosse team. They get to practice there all the time, supplementary to the fields that they actually have. The basketball courts. How many basketball courts do we have? Anybody know? Seven. Seven? We have seven courts. We have four in the field house, two in Dana, one in Blake. How much basketball does our team really need? I mean, it's great for everybody who else wants to play, but supplementary to the team, that's awesome. But, you know, what other sports are they helping besides the track team? And then we have racquetball courts. How many of you guys play racquetball? I don't know, Dr. Swicer, you like to play racquetball? Yeah, there's a couple people who like to play racquetball. We have, I think it says online we have eight courts. I don't think we actually have eight courts. I'm pretty sure we have five. But still, all this racquetball for no racquetball team? Like, why do we need that? All right, so here's a couple of statistics for you. Um, just to talk about who we're helping here. These guys. Anybody recognize these guys? Yeah? No? This is the men's varsity golf team this year that won conferences and is now qualified for nationals. So, the number one. Number one stands for the conference player of the years on the team that we have, and also the amount of times that our team has qualified for nationals. This year is the first year that our team has actually made it to nationals. It's the first time that we've been in a legitimate conference that is, or since 2008 actually, has been in a conference that has held enough teams to qualify for nationals, and this year we won the tournament for the first time. So clearly, something is happening between these five guys and this wonderful coach that is leading to a positive turn for Springfield Golf. We also had the conference player of the year who ended up winning the tournament and led us to nationals. Number four. Number four stands for the amount of all conference players on our team. There's two teams, first team and second team all conference, out of our five players, four of them made all conference. It's kind of impressive. I don't know any other teams at this school that really has that statistic, maybe besides volleyball. That's, I mean, they're pretty good. I'm not going to knock on volleyball, but still, it's a pretty uh, interesting statistic. So here comes the idea of the proposal. This is the regulation size for racquetball court. 20 feet wide, 40 feet long, 40, 20 feet uh, high. So you know the size of racquetball court. Pretty big, a lot of room. You can kind of do a lot with it. We don't have anywhere to prepare. Our golf team has one option so far right now in the winter season because we're a team in the Northeast, which is the annex for the baseball team. I don't know if any of you guys have ever been there. Uh, Dr. Schweitzer and Dr. Poison, I'm sure you know about it, but um, it's pitching cages for uh, pitchers to practice baseball. The ground is turf to a degree, but it's pretty concrete underneath. And I don't know if you've ever swung a golf club. When you hit a ball, you take a divot, 
<laughs> and when you hit concrete with your divot, it hurts your wrist, and you can take like five more swings, and then you're pretty much done. So I just wanted to uh, point your attention to this. So here's a website that has all kinds of different indoor golfing facilities and options that you can choose from. This one, if you look here at the standard space requirements, 20 feet, 13 feet wide, and 10 and a half feet high. That's less than half the size of a racquetball court. So you could potentially have two of these fill a racquetball court. Oh, I did not want to do that. Okay. <laughs> well, anyways. Okay, so here's the proposal. What I'm saying to you is this. We should make one of the racquetball courts become an indoor facility for the golf team. This is a basic indoor facility and what it looks like. You have the screen at the back that you hit into. This surface, turf, you have two options, rough and sand along with the tee. You have a monitor that's located here that'll you know, pick up all the sensors that you need in terms of how far you hit it. And then this simulator will detect everything you need to know about your swing. When you hit a ball into the screen, it'll tell you how far it went, what, how much spin was on it, if it hooked or curved and sliced and all that good stuff. So basically we want two of those in one racquetball court facility so that people can practice. As I said before, this is the size of the facility, very manageable, a little bit expensive, but in the long run, in terms of this school, it's not. I'll get into that later. Okay, so why do we need to do this? Number one team in the nation, Methodist University out of Florida. Does anybody know about Methodist? If you don't, they are a golf school. They are built on golf. I think they have 13 national championships since 1960, something ridiculous like that. And here's their top-of-the-line golf course that they have on campus. Methodist Golf Course is in Florida, so how much time do you think they experience snow? Never. And they have a golf course on campus that they can use pretty much year-round. So they're pretty prepared for any tournaments in the spring and or fall and or summer and or winter. Oglethorpe University, second in the nation right now. They won nationals last year and in 2009. They are located in Atlanta, Georgia. This is their golf course that is 0.7 miles away from their school, according to Google Maps. Which is walking distance, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> they also have another course that is 1.2 miles away from their school, the other direction. They are in Georgia, so they are pretty prepared. The last school, St. John's University in Minnesota. Clearly, Minnesota is not a warm environment, but they can still practice year-round because... This is the link that I just accidentally closed, but I will get it for you guys now. Okay, so this link right here, as you can see, this is a multi-purpose facility, much like ours, but if you read within here, the golf team practices year-round in three locations, and also during the season, they can turn this facility into an indoor golf facility that they can practice at and prepare with. So think about that. This area right here that has all these track teams and stuff gets dropped down, they bring down nets, and they turn it into an indoor golf facility where they can prepare year-round as the number three team in the nation. I think that's pretty awesome. I'm pretty sure that we would love to have a place like that if we want to compete. So as I just showed you, these are the top three teams in the nation. So what it all means? Let's look at Sam's team's quote. What is he talking about? Practice. Practice put brain in your muscle. That is pretty much a slogan of golf. Golf is built on this idea that practice is the most essential piece to being a successful golfer. Lee Trevino. Some of you may not know Lee Trevino. He was really funny. He was also really good at golf. He again is stressing the importance that practice creates touch. And touch is so important in golf when it comes to putting and chipping. Tiger Woods. I'm pretty sure everyone knows who Tiger Woods is. He's also had plenty of quotes talking about how important practice is. So again, he's just saying here, practice makes you better and it makes golf more fun. Last player here, Gary Player. Some of you may not know him. He's less known but still amazing. He was probably one of the best bunker players ever in the history of golf. 
And he says here, the more practice I get, or the more practice I have, the luckier I get. Which doesn't really make sense logically, but it makes sense in terms of golf. If you practice more, you get luckier because you're better. You'll hit shots and be like, oh, I mishit that, and you're still on the green button for birdie. So here's where we are now. This is our first time qualifying for the NCAA tournament. We haven't been there before. <laughs> We're hoping to go back, but we can't really do that if we can't prepare for it in the off season. We need that, that indoor facility and that time to prepare and get ready. This is where we will be. We want to be an appearance in the NCAA tournament every year. I know our division. I know our conference. They're really not that good. We can beat them. We did this year, and we're planning on doing so in the future. But we need that extra practice. Everybody needs practice in golf, and without it, you can't really go anywhere. And the end result here that we want to see is a Division III championship. Why not? St. John's in Minnesota, we're just we're in the Northeast, too. They're cold. They're in the Midwest, and they're cold. Why can't we all just be a good golf team, you know? So, in conclusion, I'd just like to say that this practice facility will give us the opportunity and the drive to be successful on the golf course. Thank you.